this is Gen Z mode. React Native developers, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. We are incredibly excited to finally announce Gen Z mode support for React Native. Gen Z mode was originally designed by the filter of app and its lack of support in React Native was always the elephant in the room. For every tutorial I would be publishing, you would be asking in the comment sections, how can I make my React Native apps available to my Gen Z audience? And before we dive in into the technical details of Gen Z mode, I would like to show you two demos. The first demo I would like to show you is this nice wallet app. So you can see the currencies are fiat and I think I can press here to see the volatility is fairly low. And on the top right corner, we have the uh, Gen Z mode switch button, which I can press. And so you see suddenly the volatility has increased, the currencies are crypto and we see these nice advanced gradients and emoji. So that's the first demo I wanted to, to show you. The second is a great way to digest text. So you see here we have this article, which unfortunately no one is going to read. But thanks to Gen Z mode support, we can press the button here and suddenly the content is delivered to us in a way that can be easily digested. So really exciting. And as you can tell already, these Gen Z mode designs heavily rely on advanced gradients. And in this video, I would like to show you two ways to build advanced mesh gradients using React Native Skia. So here I decided to divide my screen into uh, some sort of a grid, right? So we have the points here, the default vertices. And I can draw them in React Native Skia as triangles. And I have a library here, this really fun NPM package that gives me, so based on points, gives me the all possible triangles for the shape. So let me get the triangles. So triangles, and we're gonna invoke this uh, CDT2D function. So I can pass the default vertices as parameter. I need to do a mapping because here they're on the X, Y object form and the function expects a flat array for X, Y. So I can just do a simple map, X, Y, and I return an array. Here, Copilot can be annoying sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. Okay, uh, let's draw the triangle. So I think I have a component just to debug. The same way here I'm drawing the points, I can draw the triangles. So I have a component here, so I can pass the triangles. And so the triangles, so the returned results here are not points, they are indices into the vertices. So we have maybe, in, um, it returns zero, it means the point is the vert vertex at index zero in this array. Um, so I think, okay, here it's a skia value. So I can pass the triangles and so I need the default, the vertices as a skia value, which I can do maybe quickly here. Just wrap it into a skia value. We're gonna remove it immediately, but just to test that the function gives us the triangles nicely. That looks good. So you see, just give some points, you get some uh, nice triangles. So what are we gonna do from there? Well, first we're gonna animate the points and you'll see that the triangles will move nicely. We're gonna animate the points using some noise. So we're gonna add some randomness to the points movement and Perlin noise or simplex noise are a way to randomize the movements of the points, but in a way that feels natural. And I will point to a great article on this topic. And we also made a video mentioning this topic. I will link to it in the video description. And once we have the points nicely moving, we can try to map textures and gradients to uh, these triangles. And this should produce some uh, interesting results. So let's go ahead and 
add some noise to the points. So here we're going to derive the vertices from the default vertices. So it's not a value anymore. And we're going to use a noise. So it means we're going to need a notion of time. And to get a notion of time to do the noise animation, we can use a clock in React Native Skia. So the clock value gives us a frame number. Actually, the value that it returns is not really important. What is important is that it gives us a value that increases over time um, as you uh, as you are drawing. So I'm going to create a clock. So use clock value. And we're going to derive the vertices based on that clock value. So use the right value. The dependency is the clock. So this function is going to be executed on every frame. And so we're going to map on the default vertices. And so we get x, y. And now we are going to return something. So we're going to make it move. So we're going to add. Also, it's interesting here, Copilot is suggesting something. I have no idea what it is. And it's not what we're going to use, but should we just try it to see how it looks like? So clock is clock.current. Mm, so the amplitude, maybe I can do 40. Yeah, OK, not very. Oh, we would need also to add some frequency here. So maybe 5,000, just to see what happens. I have no idea. OK, we have some sort of uh, movement here. Not very interesting. Anyways, that's not what we, we want to do. Um, so we're going to add, but we do need a notion of amplitude and frequency. So actually, the simplex noise or Perlin noise is also a sinusoid, where you, have, so the, so you need the frequency and amplitude but it's a random sinusoid. Um, so let me actually create an amplitude and frequency here. So I'm going to do A equals, I don't know, we've divided by two. We will tweak it, and probably we need one, a different one for the x and y axis. And I think frequency 5,000, again, completely random value. We can just increase it and decrease it to get the expected results. And I see here the uh, points don't animate. So I can just maybe use vertices here directly. OK. So we're going to use a simplex noise instead. So I'm going to take the index of the vertex, and I'm going to create a noise. The seed is going to be the index of the vertex, because we want the same uh, noise per, um, per vertex. Right, so if I were to re-execute on the next frame, I don't want a completely different noise. So if not, it's not going to feel organic, right? And so we can have the value here. So it would be amplitude plus so noise, noise 2D. So it's clock.current. And I love how Copilot didn't learn yet that in React Native Skia it's not dot value, but it's dot current <laughs> uh, divided by frequency. So amplitude, yeah. And same for the y-axis. So I think maybe I can set. Let's have a look. So it moves nicely. Um, so as you can see, maybe here the amplitude, the frequency I think is good, right? So frequencies are fast, they are moving, right? I can make it very fast. I can make it five times faster. I can make it twice as slow. Um, let's do, I think 5,000 was good. And the um, amplitude, I'm going to actually um, do one for the x, so which is going to be 30% some of, so I try to do mine less than 50% of the horizontal size, so maybe 45. And on the y-axis, and the reason I'm trying to do this is to try to avoid some overlaps later. So, of, yeah, so looks good. AX, AY. OK. So now we can, here we did nothing yet, right? Now we can draw them as vertices in React Native Skia using the 
vertices components and I can pass the vertices directly. And we need to specify, so these are, the, are just the vertices. We need to specify the triangles that they form. So either here you could pass a denormalized form, so it knows it takes the vertices one by one and it knows that it's a rectangle. And you have also different, using the mod property, different uh, tr mod triangle. So let me see what's, it didn't succeed with the imports, okay. Um, huh, you see it here, so you see it's not what we want. So here I just want to show you, we have a triangle fan, triangle strips, but here we're gonna use triangles. So here you have two options, you could, so you see it's actually like not correct, the black parts. So we can denormalize the vertices or we can pass an indices that gives us the indexes of the triangles, which is exactly what uh, this function has returned. So I can go ahead and so I can create, so these triangles are not flat, but I can create, I can flat them out, indices equals triangles dot flat. So that looks good. Of course, instead of uh, putting it black, we can uh, add some colors. And so we can specify some texture mapping, which I'm gonna show you. But also, uh, if you want to use some, to do a mesh gradients, um, Skia can do some of the interpolations for, for you. So you can just provide a colors uh, property. And, oops. And um, so I have a palette here of colors. I can simply do, so I have my default vertices here. So colors, oops, I need my indices, sorry. Also, <laughs> so colors is, so for each indices, we have the, as value, the index of the vertex. So we simply return palette at index and we use the modulo to repeat. Looking good. And I can remove maybe the debug information. So here we start to have a nice mesh gradient. One thing we can do is have the edges to not move, right? This here we see these white parts, which is not good. So here we apply the noise, but if it's an edge, we don't apply the noise. So is edge. And so it's an edge if x equals zero. Uh, I think we had it here. If x equals zero, y equals zero, x equals width or x equals height. And so if it's a, an edge, we just return x, y. We don't modify the values. And so you see, now it animates, but it's pretty slow. Let's make it, let's make it bigger and maybe faster. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think, let's see if we can try to generate some other, I'm not sure what are the best colors. Here I can make the array bigger, maybe, and shuffle it to have like just some random colors. Let's see. Uh, can I do shuffle palette? I'm trying to get copilot. Yeah, that should do it. So yeah, I think it looks pretty nice. Um, so you see sometimes you see a sharp edge and it just means that because of our, uh, our randomness amplitude was so high that we have some overlaps, you know, we see it here. But uh, really fun, I think uh, primitive. You can play with it. You probably now know some better colors, but of course, we can do also some 3D projections using vertices and we can do some texture mapping. Let me show you quickly uh, an example of uh, texture mapping. So here, instead of using colors, we're gonna provide our own, so you can provide your own gradient, you can have like a billion year gradient, uh, anything you want. But I'm gonna put it into a group here to uh, assign a specific paint. And so I have my paint. 
and you could have a color, but here I want an image shader. And we're going to try to distort the image shader using texture mapping. So we have image x zero. Bear with me one second. With and height. Let me do the proper imports. And I need to load an image. Let's load an image of beautiful Oslo. Here it is. Uh, I'm going to use a require. I think I should have it somewhere here. Okay. And if the image is not loaded, we don't return anything. would be named Oslo. Okay, and here we can add fit mode cover. Very nice. And so you don't see anything, but we can provide texture mapping so it knows what was the original uh, position of each triangle. And so I'm going to do texture equals, and I think I can just provide default vertices. And you see, it gets uh, it gets deformed automatically, and it does give some sense of uh, a 3D effect. Actually, isn't that fun? I mean, here I'm just showing you the. I'm not doing anything specific, but you can use these primitives, I think, to build some interesting things. Especially if we think in terms of 3D projections, and and uh, I'm sure it's a topic that we'll get to to explore in in future videos. Now, let me show you a. A second kind of mesh gradient, which is built on top of uh, vertices, and it's the Kuhn patches. So you see here also we use texture mapping to see how the things are mapped to deform. So here it's a bit like the vertex mesh gradient, but we have Bezier curves, which are bilinearly interpolated. And so let me remove maybe the debug. So we have the colors. And so you see, you can build gradients this way. A really fun technique. And so one thing we can do, so you, you see you can set up your, your gradient how, however you would like it. And um, one thing you can do is again to make it move using a noise. So here, we have our, so we build a, a mesh. So here it's Bezier curves. And we can, we have a gesture here, so to move the handles around. But instead of using a gesture, one thing we can do is to uh, have a noise taking care of the mesh. mesh. So I'm going to remove, I'm going to disable quickly the gesture. And so instead of, having the gesture, giving the parameters of the mesh, we're going to use a noise. And again, it means we need a clock. And so I'm going to create a clock value here. And we're going to derive the mesh. So use derived values, the dependencies, the clock. So this is going to be identical of the previous uh, example, but it's just that we're dealing with uh, Bezier curves instead of uh, triangles. So we have a map, and in the map we have so the index of the cubic point, and so we have the position, control point one, control point two. Now we're going to create a noise for each point. We call it uh, P noise. <clears throat> so it's going to be a new simple simplex noise. I'm going to use the index of the cubic as a seed, but also I'm going to create a different seed for each point. So P noise. So one for the C1 and one for C2. Now we can. So we need also an amplitude and a frequency. I think 5,000 was good as a frequency. 
And amplitude, I have no idea. Let's put 40, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and again, we could have a different amplitude for each uh, point. Let's see. Just can move this outside. Let's just add the noise. So position. So we have x, which is going to be pause x plus amplitude times p noise noise 2d. Why is it? So it doesn't look happy. Let me just return. Let's see. First, first things first. Let's see if I. Yeah, yes, I forgot the callback parameter here. Okay. So perfect. Now, so we can apply the noise. So pause x plus amplitude times. That looks good. I would here use a divide. Here zero and so it's clock dot value, a uh, clock dot current, and I can do the same for y. Up. So plus so you see it moves yeah looks looks good amplitude is a bit small right maybe one maybe it's too big okay let's do 60 and let's do c1 c2 so i think it's all the same but here we have c1 let me just write oh c1 c2 And so it would be C1 noise, C2 noise. That looks good, actually. Now we need to do again, very similar. If it's an edge, we don't add the noise. So if pause x equals 0, yeah. So if it's an edge, we just return the same position. Um, looks good, maybe a bit faster. Um, oh, also, I think here, because the values can be negatives, I'm wondering here for control points if I should maybe have only positive values. Because I see, you see sometimes. Mm, let me try quickly to take only from 0 to 1. Or can I do just plus 1? Here. And I will decrease the. Uh, Let's see quickly if that makes sense. Because I'm not sure if I can. Because I see sometimes the control points are seem to be on the center. Uh, yes, and I can reduce the amplitude. Yeah, I don't know because. Well, anyways, what I can do is I'm not sure if this last change makes makes change makes sense, but now I can remove the unders and you have this nice, beautiful gradients. It feels very natural, very smooth, cool. And I have other palettes which you can use, but I have no idea about colors. I can tell you about how to do these uh, gradients, but about the colors and. Uh, how to use them uh, tastefully, I, I don't know. I, I show you how to do vertices, how to do cone patches, but then for the colors you need and how to use them tastefully, you need to show me. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example. Gen Z mode support finally part of React Native using React Native Skia, and they heavily rely on advanced gradients. And in this video, we looked at two advanced techniques to build gradients. The first one using vertices and the second one using cone patches. I hope that we will get to explore these topics 
further in future videos, especially the topic of vertices, because I think that a lot of fun things can be done there. So I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.